Hello dear friend, welcome to my channel. Today I will be talking about the types of watercolor paint, each offering its own unique characteristics and qualities. I will go over watercolor pens, tubes, inks, crayons and pencils. Each watercolor form has its own charm and advantages, and experimenting with each may let your creativity flourish. I hope this lesson will ignite your curiosity, expand your knowledge, and possibly inspire you to create your own watercolor paintings. So let's dive in and discover the wonderful world of watercolors. Let's talk about watercolor tubes. Watercolor tubes are a type of paint used by many artists. They come in small, squeezable tubes filled with watercolor pigments mixed with binder. For this project I chose 140 pounds, 100% cotton, cold pressed paper, size 22 flat brush and the following pigments. Lunar Blue, Ultramarine Finest, Cobalt Violet, Azo Yellow, Cascade Green, Green Appetite Genuine, Quinacridone Rose, Aussie Red Gold and Moon Glow. As you see here, I am repeating wet on wet technique, which I showed in my previous lesson on watercolor properties. Today though, I want to talk in more details about tube watercolors, how they behave when you apply them wet on wet, and gently allow them to mix together on a paper. I love to use watercolors that come in tubes, because they have creamy smooth consistency thanks to the gum arabic, which is a binder mixed in with pigments. This binder helps paint to adhere to the paper and provides with level of transparency. I think transparency was the main reason why I fell in love with watercolor media. Finally, when I use watercolor tubes, I make sure to close the caps after each use and store them in a big jar with a tight lid to prevent watercolors from drying out. Let's talk about watercolor pans now. Pans are type of watercolor paints that come in small solid cakes, usually encased within a plastic or tin box. Here you see how it is easier to work with a smaller size brush when working with watercolor pans. They are full and half pan sizes. These watercolors can be applied either wet on wet or wet on dry. Also, they can be used to create intricate details, loose washes and luminous layers. Because they are pre-dried, pan watercolors tend to be harder to pick up with a brush. That is why I pre-wet my colors with the water sprayer before I start using them. Pan watercolors are a great choice for students who are new to watercolors. They are easy to use, require minimal setup, making them less intimidating for beginners. Pan watercolors are also highly portable. They are compact, lightweight and easy to transport, making them ideal for plein air painting or for artists on the go. They are also less messy and require minimal maintenance. If cost is a main factor for you, I think pan watercolors are going to be generally more economical and can last a long time with proper care. They are often sold in sets, which may be more cost-effective for beginners or those wanting to try multiple colors. If you are able to try pan watercolors yourself, please share your thoughts and experiences with me. I'll be very happy to hear from you. I am now ready to move on to discussing watercolor inks. Ink watercolors are a distinct form of watercolor paints that come in highly concentrated liquid form. They usually come in bottles with droppers, which makes for easy applications. Inks provide intense, vibrant colors, which can be easily diluted with water to achieve a range of transparency and color intensity. I rarely use watercolor inks in my works, simply due to their highly staining nature. When I do use them, I make sure to rinse the palette and um, all the surfaces the inks got spilled on. Otherwise, they are very exciting to work with, as they produce bright and vivid colors. Due to their liquid form, watercolor inks are ideal for techniques like calligraphy, illustration, and washes. They can be applied with brushes, deep pans, or airbrushes, and can be used on various surfaces, including canvas and wood. 
While working with ink watercolors, I noticed that they dry very quickly, which can be both an advantage and a limitation depending on the desired outcome. When they are dried, it's almost impossible to lift them from the surface of the paper, so this is something to keep in mind. In short, ink watercolors provide a unique, vibrant and versatile option for artists interested in exploring non-traditional watercolor techniques or working on various surfaces. They differ from pan and tube watercolors in terms of consistency, concentration, application techniques and storage. Experimenting with watercolor inks can open up new creative possibilities for you. I hope you will get an opportunity to play with watercolor inks. If you do, please share your experiences with me, as I'm still learning new things every day about this fun media. Now let's try watercolor inks using wet-on-wet -wet technique. I simply pre-wet watercolor paper with water and loosely applied watercolor inks. I honestly can watch watercolor inks flow and interact with each other for hours. I love how they create unique patterns for just being themselves. I also want to thank you for being here with me and sharing my love for watercolors. If you know anyone who will enjoy these videos, please share it, like it and subscribe to my channel. I love having you here. Now let's move on to discussing watercolor crayons. Watercolor crayons are an exciting medium to work with. They provide with vibrant colors and ease of handling. They consist of water-soluble pigments, binders, and wax. This combination creates a solid, crayon-like form that can be used both dry and wet, allowing for a range of artistic effects and techniques. Here I decided to create a simple color wheel choose cool and warm tones of each primary color and show you in practice how watercolor crayons behave. If you are interested in learning more about color wheel, please stay tuned for my future tutorials where I will talk about color theory and go into details about cool and warm colors. Now let's talk about how we can use watercolor crayons. You can draw color and create textures with dry crayons and then use a wet brush to blend and transform the crayon marks into painterly effects. You'll see that later. Alternatively, you can also dip the crayon tip and then draw with it for a softer, more watercolor-like effect. Also, you can apply multiple layers of dry crayon marks and then blend everything with water to create depth and dimension in your artwork. Here's another idea for watercolor crayons that I thought of. You can pre-wet the paper and then apply crayons on a wet paper and see the fluid and spontaneous effects of watercolor crayons. I should try that myself and then show you the result sometime in the future. Now let's see how watercolor crayons look like when I apply water on them. The crayons I used here I got about 15 years ago when I first got interested in watercolor painting. It looks like these crayons are still as good as new. I love how compact they are, lightweight and easy to carry. I think I should use them more in my future paintings. Let's take a moment to observe what happens when I apply a brush full of water onto watercolor crayon marks. Now 
Finally, let's take a look how we can use watercolor pencils. The reason why I like watercolor pencils is for their precision and the ability to transform into stunning watercolor effects. Watercolor pencils consist of water-soluble pigments and binders, which allow the pigment to dissolve in water. They behave much like traditional colored pencils. The water-soluble nature of the pigments help me create both dry and wet effects. Here I use 100% cotton cold press paper, just like in all my previous examples, and warm and cool tones of each primary color. I hope this example will help you slowly familiarize yourself with the color theory and color wheel arrangement. As I apply cool and warm tones of each primary color, I wonder how these colors would look like if I vary the pressure on the pencil. How would they behave if I scribble pencils on wet or dry washes? All of these are exciting exercises you could try at home if you have watercolor pencils. In this example, I'm showing you how to apply dry pencil marks to a watercolor paper and then activate them with water. There are many other ways you can use watercolor pencils. Wet the paper before applying the pencil marks, create soft diffuse color washes, or dip the pencil tip in water and draw with it and you may get more intense paint-like effect from it. I hope you get a chance to play with them. If you do, feel free to share your works with me, either in the comments below or through direct messaging. Like watercolor crayons, watercolor pencils are compact, lightweight, and mess-free, easy to set up, and uh, I think they're suitable for artists of all skills and levels. Beginners can easily experiment with them, while more advanced artists can use them to achieve intricate details and unique effects. This concludes my lesson on the forms of watercolors. I hope you enjoyed it. Please visit my channel again for more lessons like this, where we will learn about watercolor techniques, experiment with color mixings, practice washes, and learn to embrace the unpredictable nature of this amazing media. There is no right or wrong way to approach watercolor painting. The most important thing is to have fun, express yourself, and enjoy the creative process. Thank you, and until next time.